Welcome to Alipedia World Grade 10 Computer Science Video Lecture Series. I am Upeka Wendy Bona and from this episode we are going to start programming with C++ in NetBeans IDE. To program, we use a programming language. We also use a compiler to translate our source code into object code and a linker to link our object code into an executable program. We talked about this part in the previous episode. In addition to that, we use some computer application to enter our source code text into the computer and to edit it. These are just the first and most crucial tools that constitute our programmer's toolset or program development environment. If you work from a command line window as many professional programmers do, you will have to issue the compile and link commands yourself. Instead of that, if you use an IDE, what we call for interactive development environment or integrated development environment, as many professional programmers also do, a simple click on the correct button will do the job. IDEs usually include an editor with helpful features like color coding to help distinguish between comments, keywords, and other parts of your program source code, plus other facilities to help you to debug your code, compile it, and run it. Debugging is the activity of finding errors in a program and removing them. You will hear a lot about that along the way. If you could remember, in the previous program, we looked at our first Hello World program. So now we are going to implement this program using the NetBeans IDE. Now here is my NetBeans IDE. I'm using the version 8.0. Basically, NetBeans IDE is for the Java programming language. But if you need, you can also use this for PHP programming language as well as C++ programming language. By default, NetBeans IDE is configured for the Java programming language. If you are using this for PHP or C++, first you have to configure. So to configure this, click the Tools menu and click the Options menu item. Here you can see it supports PHP as well as C++. If the C++ tab is not shown in your window, then you have to activate the plugin. So for that, Click the Tools menu and go for the Plugins. In the Installed tab, you can see the C++. If the C++ is not activated, click this button and activate it. After that, C++ tab will be appears in here. As I have already configured this, I do not need to go through the configuration process again. If it is not configured, it will show you how to configure. For more details, you can go through their website in here. According to their instructions, you will need another tool called Sigwin or MinGW. Here I am using the Sigwin. So you have to go to the Sigwin site and download these tools. And after downloading them, configure this window and then you are ready to start your first program writing. So for that, first you need to create a C++ project, right click in here and select the new project menu item and in the window appears, select the category C++. Now I am going to create a C++ application. So I am going to select this one, it says, creates a new application project, it uses an IDE generated make file to build your project. Now go for the next step. Here, try to write a name for the project I'm say hello world and then we are creating a main file which have the main method and then click finish and here is our hello world project. Expand the source files folder and in this file we are going to write our first program. Now delete all the auto generated code, we are going to write everything our own. The first line in our program is hash include io screen. You can see when you are typing, it suggests few things. You can simply select what you need and then the io screen. 
It can also be selected without typing everything. And the next line is to say we are using the namespace std. And then just a simple command to say what this program is for. This program is to output the message hello world to the monitor. Okay, now let's start the main function, main parentheses and the function body. Here you can see the end curly brace is auto-generated. Now inside the function body, we have to write the cout statement. Cout, the output operator and within the double quotations, hello world. At the end of the double quotations, we will put backslash n to say go for the next line. To mark the end of the statement, we will put the semicolon. Ok, now the program is ready. Then we have to compile this source code and run. So for that, we can simply click this green colored arrow. It says run project. So I am going to click this button. Here it will compile. And in the console, you can see it prints hello world. We have to press the enter to close this terminal. If that kind of a terminal was not appeared on your screen, you can right click on your project and go for the properties. And at the run tree menu item, click the external terminal in here for the console type. And then apply and OK. And after that, when you run this, the output will appear in a command prompt. OK, now you know how to use NetBeans to write C++ code. Now try out following things on your code. First, remove the hash include line. And then misspell the library name. And then don't terminate the string with a quotation mark. And use the less than operator rather than the output operator. And then use a single quotes rather than the double quotes. And finally, see what would happen if you remove the semicolon. Each of these single small errors are an example of a kind of mistake we often make. So try to find out what would happen if you make them. Now here I am going to remove the hash include line. Looks like ok. Let's save this. Now try to run this. It gives me a build field. Let's look at the error. It says C out was not declared in this scope. Therefore, let's put that back. And this time, let's misspell the library name by putting the S in here. Clear the console and try to save this. It gives me an error in the line numbering. That means we got a compile time error. It says cannot find include file IO screens. In their libraries, there is no library named as IO streams, but IO stream. Let's save this again. And the third question was remove this quotation mark at the end. Now let's see what would happen. It gives me a compile time error as unexpected token. That is because the termination of the strings is not in there. Therefore, it gives a troublesome period for the compiler. Let's give that quotation mark back again. Our next question was using a less than operator rather than the output operator. Looks like OK. Let's try to run this file. It compiled and executed OK. But in the console, you can see the hello world is not outputted. That means the C++ compiler taken this as lesser than operator rather than the output operator. Let's put back the output operator again. Our next question was to use single quotes rather than the double quotes. Let's try to save this. Looks like OK. Let's try to run this. This one also doesn't work as we expected. You can see the hello world is not output in the console. And the final question was to remove this semicolon. Let's try to save this. And here we get an error saying unexpected token. Because the compiler has identified this statement is not terminated. Therefore let's put that back again. 
Now that many C++ statements are terminated by a semicolon. The compiler needs those semicolons to know where one statement ends and the next one begins. Good. Now I hope you are familiar to use the NetBeans IDE to program C++. As learners, it is important to learn both the languages Java and C++. And that's why I specifically selected the NetBeans IDE to teach C++. Because using that IDE, you can program both the languages Java and C++. Now in this episode, we have shown you few examples of trivial errors in a trivial program. That is because to make the point that you, like all the programmers, spend a lot of time looking for errors in program source text. Most of the time, we look at text with errors in it. And after all, if we were convinced that some code was correct, we typically be looking at some other code or taking the time off. It came as a major surprise to the early computer pioneers that they were making mistakes and had to devote a major portion of their time to finding them. It is still a surprise to most newcomers to programming. When you program, you will get quite annoyed with the compiler at times. Sometimes it appears to complain about unimportant details, such as missing of semicolons, or about things you consider obviously right. However, the compiler is usually right. When it gives an error message and refuses to produce object code from your source code, there is something not quite right with your program. That means what you wrote isn't precisely defined by C++ standards. The compiler has no common sense. It isn't a human. It is very picky about details. Since it has no common sense, you wouldn't like to try to guess what you meant by something that looked okay but didn't conform to the definition of C++. If it did and its guess was different from yours, you could end up spending a lot of time trying to figure out why the program didn't do what you thought you had told it to do. When all is said and done, the compiler saves us from a lot of self-inflicted problems. It saves us from many more problems than it causes. So please remember, the compiler is your friend. Possibly, the compiler is the best friend you have when you program. Now, before winding up this episode, here is a question for you. Try to write a program outputting following two lines. Welcome to Edupedia World, Grade 10, Computer Science. Now it has two lines, remember not a one line, it has two lines. Try to write a simple program as we have learned in here. And with that we are going to end up this episode. So here we have put our first step in C++ programming. From the next episode we are going to learn the primitive variables in the C++. Thank you for watching and stay tuned on with Edupedia World.